Makers of Postum, the favorite mealtime drink in millions of American homes, present those two lovable old characters from the hill country, Lum and Abner. Last night, when it came time for someone in your family to fix the furnace before going to bed, did this happen to you? Tom! Tom! Don't make so much noise with that furnace. Do you hear me? You know how nervous I am, and you're just making it worse. I can't stand it. Well, if that has ever happened in your home, in fact, if any of the usual noises around the house that should not upset you do affect you that way, well, just consider this possibility. Maybe you're what doctors call a nervous irritable. And maybe coffee nerves is to blame. Because it's no exaggeration. While many people can drink coffee without becoming nervous and irritable, many others just shouldn't touch it. So if you shouldn't, if you think coffee's making you cranky and jittery, switch to Postum. Because there's no caffeine, no stimulant, nothing in Postum that could possibly affect your nerves. Postum's are a delightful, tempting mealtime drink with a fragrant aroma and a delicious, mellow flavor that you'll enjoy to the utmost. So just ask your grocer for Postum. Then, if coffee has been making you a nervous irritable, see what happens when you drink Postum instead. In a couple of weeks, see if you aren't mighty glad you switched to Postum. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, friends, Lum and Abner are really in trouble. As we left the old fellows last Wednesday, an inspector from the post office department was telling them he had to take them into Little Rock for questioning about their unauthorized post office. Abner has returned to Pine Ridge, however, and as we look in on the little community today, we find him over at the Jotham Down store talking to Grandpappy Spears. I'd love to help the worst way, Abner, but I don't know nothing I can do. Well, you could tell them that you told us to put in another post office here in town. Well, I'd be glad to tell them that. I don't know what good it'd do, though. I ain't got no authority to go around telling people they can put in post offices. Well, you're acting as postmaster while they call us to ain't here. Yeah, but even Richard couldn't give permission. you got to get a license from the government to put in one of them things, Abner. Yeah, well, Dick's over there at Little Rock today. I called him over at Malvern yesterday and told him what happened, and he said he'd go over and talk to him, see if there's anything he could do to help. Well, yeah, I know he'd be glad to help if he can, but I don't know nothing Richard could do. Well, he knows them fellas over there. He's been postmaster here for so long and all, you know. Well, what all did he say over there yesterday? Did they have you in court? Or did no, no, stand? no. They just had us up before the post office inspector, or whatever they call him. That there detective that was down here tattletailed on us. Said he bought some stamps from us for less than a regular price, and I found out that's again the law, too. Yeah, I feared that was going to get you in trouble cutting the prices out of the way. Well, it ain't again the law to cut the price on eggs and sugar and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's different. The government's selling them stamps, and they don't allow nobody to cut under them on the prices, neither. Yeah, well, they had lum charged with something else there, too. I forget what they called it now. But it was when that detective come in here and wanted to buy a money order, and Lum never had no money order blank, so he just gave him his personal check for it. Oh, my goodness. Well, no wonder they're holding him. Well, if check's good, they'll collect the money on it. But you can't do that, Abner. I know, I know. He found that out. And on top of that, why, they got him charged with tampering with the United States mail running an unlegal post office without telling us that we could. Yeah. You was mixed up in that just as much as Lum. How come I'm going to let you go and keep Lum over there? Why, well, Lum taking all the blame. And that detective told him that he have, never had no evidence against me. So they finally let me go. Well, you lucky to get out of it. Oh, yes, yeah. But now I've got to get Lum out of it somewhere or other if I can. 
I wanted to stay over there and help, but he said for me to come on back and put on a sale here in the store, raise all the money we can so as he can hire a lawyer to fight the case for him. You gonna put on a sale? Are you? I done got it on. Well, I never seen no signs or nothing. Oh, no, no, I decided to cut down on expenses, too. I ain't gonna advertise none. Well, how are folks going to know you got on a sale, for goodness sake? Well, I'll tell them when they come in here. I told Sister Simpson this morning. <laughs> I nearly forgot it till she started out of the store, and I happened to think about it. So I uh, give her back $3 on what all she bought. For goodness sake, she can't raise no money that way. No, I was just thinking a while ago, I don't believe that sale I did on had was a very good one. Well, Abner, you got to advertise. Let wait a minute, wait a minute. Here right. comes Squire Skin. Uh, uh. I go, because he knows law matters, Grandpap. He might have some ideas on how to get Lum out of this mess. Yeah, he's got out of enough trouble himself. He ought to know how to get somebody else out. Yeah, yeah. Come in, Squire. Yeah, howdy, Squire. Well, good morning, good morning. I'm old friend this morning. Oh, Tolliver, well, I reckon you heard about Lum, didn't you, Squire? Yes, yes, yes. Cedric Wheeland would just tell me about it a while ago. Well, it looks like Lum has gotten himself into some serious trouble this time, man. Yeah, that's what I'm feared of. We was just wondering if you know anything we can do to help him, Squire. Edna, I don't think anybody can help him. From what Cedric says, they've got him booked on three or four charges. Any one of them is enough to send him to the penitentiary for about ten years. There, huh? Well, yes, it looks like Lum might have a change of address for the next ten years. Oh, my goodness. Well, he never meant no harm by it. Dad, blame it, it's all your fault, Grandpap. You made him mad, and he just opened up that post office here in the store just to run you out of bed. Well, don't lay it on to me. If he done that, he's good enough for him. Well, I just came over, Abner, to see if Lum would be interested in uh, raising a little money. Why, of course he is. We're just talking about it. He, he's needing money to hire a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Hey, you, you got some money that you could loan him, Squire? Well, uh, uh, not exactly loaning, Abner, but uh, I might consider buying his interest in the store here at a price, of course. Well, I think he wants to stay in the store business if he can. Uh, stay? <laughs> the only way Lum can stay in the grocery business, Abner, for the next ten years is to be transferred to the commissary department at Alcatraz. Whereabouts? Alcatraz, it's a, a little ocean resort off the coast of California that the government maintains for just such men as Lum. Well, that'd be nice. But I don't think he's got money enough to go way out there on those squires. Well, the government will take care of his transportation. That is, uh, out there. Well, I'll be dead blamed. <laughs> and here we've been worried to death about him, Grandpa. Well, hold on. That's a penitentiary, ain't it, Squire, that Alcatraz? Yes, yes, it's a federal penitentiary. Oh. That's where Ruth Forster's boy's at, Abner. In a penitentiary? Why, sure. Ruth thinks he's in the Navy because he talks about looking out across the ocean every day, but the boy's in jail where he's at. Well, I thought he was in college. Heard somebody say he's in Alcatraz. I thought that was a university. No, no, they got him for using the mails to defraud, selling them hound dogs of his through the mail, claiming all sorts of things about them that weren't so. Well, I do know. His mama had a hand from him not long ago. He ain't at all satisfied there at Alcatraz. Told her in the letter that he'd rather be home. Well... When you see Lum, Abner, or talk to him, you might mention that I stand ready to talk business with him on this store deal. Well, I'll tell him, but he ain't mentioned yet about wanting to sell, Squire. He is. Well, I've got to get on over the place. And if you hear anything, Abner, why, let me know. Yeah, all right, Squire. Hmm. I hope Lum won't sell it to him, though. I don't know of any one fella I'd rather have as a partner less than him. Oh, no. Uh, just sitting here wondering, Abner, it would help any if we circulated a petition around here, got everybody in town to sign it, and take it over at Little Rock? Petition for what? For him to turn them loose. Oh, I don't know. We can try it. I know that that might be a good idea, Grandpa. Yeah, let me get a pencil and paper. I'll sign my name to it. There's a tablet right there, Abner. Get yeah. a big man. Let's use a new one. Yeah, yeah. This one will be all right. Here, here now. 
You sign your name right there on the top line, and I'll sign my name right under it there. Well, wait a minute. we got to say something up here at the top. At the top? You know, we the undersigned and all that stuff. Oh, oh, yeah. What all is it they say up there? I don't know something about it. Uh, we just have to make something up. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, who it may concern. Yeah, that sounds legal. We, the undersigned, have no dumb editors for years. Know that he is honest and upright in all his dealings. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. If he violated the law, it was unbeknownst to him, and he never done it on a purpose. Yeah, that's sounding good. Yeah, write all that down. That's sounding good. Let me, see. Let me study up what I'm going to say. We, his neighbors and friends, respectful, ask it. You turn him loose and let him wait, come wait, home. Wait, somebody coming in the front door there. Huh? Oh. Customer, we'll finish it in just a minute. I'll get him to sign it, too. Stranger, ain't it? Must be. I don't know nobody around here that ever gets in that big a rash. Hey, come in, sir. Come in. What can I do for you? Must be hard of hearing, Abner. Yeah. I say, what can I do for you? Abner, lock the front door up there, quick. Lock the front door? Huh? Well, for goodness sake. Well, I'm Edwards. I never would have known you. Where's your mustache? Well, I'll be damned. What are you doing back in Pine Ridge, huh? Lock that front door up there, Edna, quick, and come on back to the feed room, and I'll tell you all everything. I've got to... Well, we're afraid that petition of Grandpaps and Abner's won't do Lum much good now. When you need sleep, you need it badly. There's a good chance that the very thing that's made you so hard up for sleep is going to continue to prevent your getting it. Yes, maybe coffee nerves is keeping you awake. For while many people can drink coffee without losing sleep, you may be one of the many others who can't. So be sensible. If you find coffee stands between you and a good night's sleep, switch to Postum. For Postum contains no caffeine, no sleep-disturbing stimulant whatever. And a hot, steaming cup of Postum is simply delicious. Fragrant and mellow as can be. Postum's wonderfully economical, too. It actually costs less than one half cent a cup. So if coffee robs you of precious sleep, drink Postum instead. See if you don't benefit from the change in just a few days. And after giving Postum a fair trial, say for two weeks, see if you aren't getting all the sleep you really need. Ask your grocer for Postum tomorrow. There's a reason. Forget friends, come along with us next Monday evening at the same time when we again go visiting Pine Ridge with Lum and Abner, who say, Looks like the first habit a fellow has to break in order to become an artist is the bad habit of eating. Lou Crosby speaking. And remember, Postum, your best bet for a enough. Columbia Broadcasting System.